Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia Photographer, and today I want to talk about metering modes and why there's more than one. Camera metering seems to be one of those subjects that's like dark magic in a camera system. For whatever reason, people rarely understand what the deal is with metering and why there's more than one way to meter a photo. What I'm going to do in this video is go through the metering modes that Nikon uses because I have Nikon cameras. All camera companies metering systems are essentially the same. They just go by different names and one of them might be unique to a particular model or brand or whatever. But there's three basic types of metering and I'm gonna go over those today with you. Metering modes can be found in your owner's manual. You know, that unreadable little book that comes with your camera? It's all in here, it explains how they work. I'm gonna be referring to this Z6 owner's manual in this video for the different metering modes that the Z6 has. Just a reminder, the, the owner's manual is valuable, not for just starting campfires. The three basic metering modes on a Nikon camera are spot metering, center weighted metering, and matrix metering. Now, these three modes do similar things, but slightly different ways of getting to that end result. To, before we dive, dive into those modes really deep though, what is metering? Well, metering is based off of one of these, or even one of these. I have a couple of them. These are Seconics. Seconics is like the name in the industry when it comes to light meters. But as the name of the mode suggests, they're using a light meter to determine the exposure of your frame. And basically, when you sum it up, it's, it's how the camera determines how bright to make your image in simplest terms. Back in the old days, we metered a photo with one of these. Okay, this is a light meter. This is where the word metering comes from. The light meter took basically a reading of the ambient light and you set the scaling based off your ISO. There's a little selector on here that I move back and forth and in this little window, it says the ISO value and right now I'm gonna set it to 800 ISO. They call it ASA, that's how old this meter is. Then you have, all this switch does is sets high load and low load, low load, high mode and low mode. In other words, dim light or bright light. Right now I've got it set on bright light. Then this little dome gives you a diffused or a direct light reading. So I'm gonna read diffuse so it takes in all the atmosphere. And I would hold it right here in front of the subject and you would push the read button and let off. And it's gonna actually grab the data it's got a little thing that locks the needle in place. Uh, and right now it's locked it between 10 and 11 on this reference scale. So you look down here on the bottom of the meter, there's a little reference scale. You dial it around till the arrow points towards what the meter is actually saying. And then up here on this upper scale, it tells you your f-stop and your shutter speed to achieve that exposure for a properly exposed frame. And right now it's saying if I was going to use f4, it would be around one eight hundredth of a second. It shows it right here on this little scale. And that's how they did it in the old days to make sure they didn't waste film trying to figure out how bright the sun was or whatever. They just took a light reading, set the camera to these values and took their photos and they came out. But they've taken this machine and they've put it basically inside of this camera. So you no longer really need to carry one of these around with you. Unless you're shooting film, then it's, it's a good idea to have one. I have them basically for nostalgia and I have this camera. This is a functioning brownie. It works. The handle broke on me. It wasn't broke when I first bought it. But this little box camera takes fairly good photos. I cleaned all the lenses on it and got it, took it apart and cleaned it all up real good. And the viewfinders are bright and clear and the, the taking lens is nice and clean. But I have to use one of these with this so that I don't over or underexpose the photos. Okay, to talk a little about the metering modes themselves, you have spot metering. Okay. What it's going to do with spot metering in a Nikon camera is it takes wherever your focus point is, the center of your focus point, whether it be a zone focus or a pinpoint focus or whatever, a wide area autofocus, it looks at the one right in the center. But with spot metering, it takes a very specific section of the image and, and adjusts the exposure so that that one spot of the image is correctly exposed and it ignores the rest of the image. 
that's really good if you're wanting to get a specific subject exposed properly and you just don't care if it blows the sky out or if the shadows are pitch black as long as that one spot's exposed correctly it's great for that and a lot of people use spot metering because it allows them artistic control of the frame the next basic mode of metering is center weighted what center weighted does is it takes the center of the frame it's about the internal like 17 percent or something the greatest weight of an area in the center of the frame the size can be chosen using custom setting b3 this is the classic meter for portraits and is also recommended when using filters with an exposure factor over 1x so center weighted basically applies a larger percentage to the center of the frame than the perimeter and basically gives you the ability to control the exposure in the center of the frame okay the next one is called matrix in nikon terminology matrix metering is basically where it takes the whole frame does a bunch of mathematics tries to keep the highlights from being blown out and the shadows from being too dark and just exposes the whole frame this one's good for general photography it really works really well if you're not trying to do a specific kind of photography like if you're shooting like sean tucker shooting light and shadow and he wants his shadows black or whatever that kind he wants to do spot meter most likely you know he'll control it very specifically for those kind of things but in the general terms if you're just out shooting street or whatever matrix metering will give you a good exposure every time and nikon's matrix metering i don't know what canon calls it but it's very similar it works really well it's a very good system and it and it it's what i use most of the time now there's one thing we have to cover if we do a metering video. What this value is, is called exposure compensation. On my X-T3, it's a separate knob on the corner of the camera. Because if you run aperture priority or shutter priority to where the camera has some control over the exposure, you know, if you're running full manual, then you have absolute control over the exposure and metering is irrelevant. Metering's irrelevant and exposure comps are relevant with full manual because you're literally just setting how bright or how dark by shutter speed, ISO, and uh, aperture yourself. Pushing manual out of the way and you use any of the automated modes, exposure compensation gives you some control over the, the exposure without having to dive into menus and without having to go in and change metering modes and say on the fly i want the image to be a little brighter and i'm running matrix metering and it's reading the sky and it's saying hey this image is too bright and it darkens it down to where the sidewalk is black but i know that i can just reach up there and hit that button and spin that thumb wheel and it'll add two stops of exposure compensation brightening the image up suddenly my street's back in and the sky's blown out but i don't care that's what that button gives you. It's a quick adjustment. That's what exposure compensation is, and it works really well. If you don't use it, you should look into it, especially if you like run, like I like to run aperture priority a lot. And on the X-T3, that knob is just right there above, the, right beside the shutter. So I can just reach up and dial it up and brighten the image right up. It works really well for that. So yeah, if you get the opportunity, them chickens are over there playing chase. So if you get the opportunity to use exposure compensation, play with it some and see what it does to your images. It'll just, it'll give you, you know, a level of control over your photos that you didn't have before. But that's metering in a nutshell. I just wanted to kind of throw that together for you guys so I could go over it with you and kind of explain what's going on because a lot of people don't understand metering, why you have three different modes. And the Z6 has a fourth mode. It has highlight weighted metering, which I think is where it controls the metering based on the highlights blowing out or not. And I've never used it, but it's in there. I went, I went through the book this morning, you know, owner's manuals, you should have it. If you don't have one, you can download them online. Uh, I have it digitally on my phone as well. You know, they're really handy if you want to do something specific and you don't do it regularly, you can look it up in the book. That was the point of this whole video, was to go over the metering modes in a camera and kind of explain them in layman's terms so that it made sense, you know, spot metering is just one spot of the image, wherever you set that focus point typically is where it meters. And then you got center weighted where the center will be correctly exposed and the outside parameters will be dimmer or darker depending on how the center is. And then you got matrix where it tries to balance the whole frame and get a complete frame exposed correctly. And then exposure compensation where you can brighten and darken that whole frame based off of the automatic measurements that the camera's working on. And that's it. So if you've got questions about it or if you've got comments or if I've overlooked something, 
you know, that's pretty grievous that needs to be brought up, put it down in the comments. We'll talk about it. And if you like my video, I appreciate that thumbs up. Of course, if you like the channel as a whole, there's a subscribe button right over there. You hit that subscribe button and you'll, you know, and the notification bell will tell you when I can drop a video and all that sort of thing. They normally come out on Wednesdays and Saturdays, but occasionally I'll throw an extra one in there for fun. But until next time, this is David, the Georgia photographer, saying, get your camera out. Go take a picture with it, all right? We'll see you later. Bye-bye.